Hi, uh, it's me, Jamie. <laughs> uh, I haven't recorded a YouTube video in like 10 years, but, uh, I've never really done anything like this, uh, so it's kind of a new thing. Tell me if, uh, you know, any of you are actually interested in it, but I just wanted to kind of make a video log, if you will, of, uh, my plans for 2022. Um, uh, in case you're one of the 800 inactive subscribers I have who have not been following my career, uh, I don't really make YouTube videos anymore, but I do make games. Uh, I'm a game developer. Uh, that's that's why all of my videos at the moment are game trailers, and I've kind of purged every other video from my channel. I didn't delete them. They're you know if you're if you internet sleuth enough, you can find them. If for whatever reason you want to find one of my random old videos, they're all technically still publicly available. But I did unlist all of them because, uh, well, that's just, you know, I don't do that anymore. So I don't want anyone coming to this channel thinking that I still do that because I don't. And a lot of those videos are from when I was a kid anyway. It's kind of embarrassing. Anyways, that has nothing to do with what I'm going to talk about here. Uh, 2022 happened. I've already released my first game uh, of the year, which is Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch for those who don't know or haven't seen the videos that I uploaded, uh, you know, Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch is the sequel to Pellet Packer Micro Munch. Pellet Packer Micro Munch came out on February 1st, uh, 2021. Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch came out on February 1st, 2022. Uh, it's a very different game from the first one, but, you know, employs many of the same general elements. Uh, it's a platformer rather than an arcade game, essentially. Um, it's free, like all my games, so, you know, if you haven't played it, consider it, it's, uh, it's a really fun game. Anyways, um, the uh, first update, and I'm not sure if, you know, anybody who would be watching this video doesn't already know this, but, um, I've left Game Jolt, uh, because Game Jolt, uh, I really don't know how to sugarcoat this, fucked me. <laughs> Uh, one day I plan to make a video about how Game Jolt fucked me, but, uh, I'd rather not right now, because if I did that, I'd kind of be fucking over some other people, so I'm not gonna do that. Uh, I've pretty much completely moved over to itch.io, uh, which is where I upload my games now, it's where I upload, it's where I'm gonna upload my games in the future, and I'm actually planning to take down the downloads of my games on Game Jolt. I'll keep the pages up because sentimental value and whatnot, but uh, I'm going to take down the downloads because I don't plan on updating those downloads. So if you download my game from Game Jolt, you'll probably eventually end up with an outdated version of the game, which is not good. So, you know, um, anyways, uh... Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch came out on February 1st. Again, it was a sequel to Micro Munch. Uh, and then the game I released before that, just like three months before that, was Blood Knuckle. I released Blood Knuckle, Rooftop of the Impossible Skyscraper, on November 19th, 2021. And then the game before that was Micro Munch, which I already mentioned. Um, so basically... Uh, I have a few plans for 2022. I don't know if I've ever mentioned this publicly, but I actually have a mental lineup of pretty much every single game that I plan to eventually release before I, you know, retire. Uh, and that's not to say that that's the end-all be-all. There's every chance that I might randomly come up with some concept and decide, oh, I want to do that. Um, and similarly, there's somewhat of a chance, I guess, that I might cancel some of those planned projects, but I honestly sincerely doubt it because I've already invested a lot into most of them. Uh, that being said, there are two games, mainly, that I plan to focus on in 2022. Focus on developing, that is. First one is Blood Knuckle 2. Blood Knuckle Exploration of the Illustrious Underground, which is the official title, but that's a little long-winded, so I'm just going to refer to it as Blood Knuckle 2 in this video. Um, Blood Knuckle 2 uh, might come out in 2022, and if it does, it's going to be late 2022. If I'm lucky, I can get it out by November 2022, because you just know how I love my anniversary release dates. You know, Battery Chat Builder 2 released on the one-year anniversary of Battery Chat Builder 1, and more recently, Pellet Packer 2 released on one-year anniversary of Pellet Packer 1. So, you know, if I could get Game Jolt... 
if I could get Blood Knuckle 2, don't know why I said Game Jolt, uh, out by November 19th, 2022, and that would be pretty cool, because, you know, uh, I like that. I like having... I like doing that. I like doing anniversary releases. It's fun, you know. <laughs> what better way to celebrate the anniversary of a franchise than the next entry in that franchise? <laughs> Uh, that being said, Blood Knuckle 2 is going to take a while to develop, because, believe it or not, and I know this might sound like something that would make the development cycle go easier, one thing that is going to make this game a little more difficult for me to develop than you might think is that I am going to reuse the engine from the first game. I know what you're thinking, Jamie, doesn't that make the work easier? Well, not necessarily. Uh, I've actually never reused an engine before. I've made sequels to games, but every single one of them has pretty much reinvented that game. Uh, it's kind of a thing I like to do with my sequels. Uh, you know, I don't, I've never really made a sequel to one of my games that has reused the same engine or the same gameplay as the first one. Uh, in general, it's actually something I kind of avoid because A, I like just having new ideas and executing new concepts, usually Usually the concept comes first, and then I'm like, hey, I can apply this brand from that game I made a while ago to this concept, and it's it works, you know. It's not a it's not just a cookie cutter, you know, here's the first thing again but better. Uh it's a new thing with a very similar sentiment. You know, most of my sequels are more so spiritual successors than they are technically sequels, but I consider them to be official sequels anyways. Um, that being said, reusing an engine is a new thing for me. I've never done it before, and it is very involved. Um, at least for me it is, because basically every single thing in that engine, every individual object, every piece of code was designed with a specific context in, in mind for a specific level or a specific objective, you know. Uh, and now I'm essentially having to rework all that. I have to figure out, you know, what objects I want to completely delete because they don't apply to the sequel, or what objects I want to keep around because I want to recycle some of their code maybe for new objects. Uh, and then on top of that, you know, it's just, it's just a lot of work. Um, and like I said, the biggest thing is it's something I haven't really done before. So that's why Blood Knuckle 2 is, uh, you know, I can't make any promises about a 2022 release date. I'm not sure if I can get Blood Knuckle 2 done by the end of this year. I'm gonna try to, but I would not be surprised if Blood Knuckle 2 ends up releasing as late as mid-2023 rather than late 2022. That being said, uh, let's talk about the second game, which is Bananarang the Scattered Shards, which I'm sure many of you are aware of, uh, because it is by far the longest development cycle for anything I've ever made, ever. Um, I started developing Bananarang the Scattered Shards in 2020, August of 2020, and it is now February of 2022. Uh, it's going on two years <laughs> since I started developing this game. Uh, and it has gone through so many different things. The main thing is just procrastination. I've put it aside many times in favor of other projects that I was working on. One of the other things is that uh, this was a collaborative project. I say was. I'm going to get to that later. Um... This was a collaborative project between me and uh, a guy named Funtime Web. That's not his actual name, but that's what he would prefer to be referred to uh, on on the internet as. Uh, that being said, Funtime Web was essentially going. You know, he came to me with uh, some elements of the concept for the game. Uh, he made a bit of the music, um, and uh, well, uh, basically. Long story short, uh, he's not a part of the project anymore. Uh, he and I had some creative differences, made it clear that he no longer wants to be a part of the project, so unfortunately he is no longer a part of the project, which means that I pretty much have to rework everything that he contributed to it, because now I have to 
replace all of the music that he made for the project. I have to... The title screen was basically the replacement for credits. Like, the title screen for this game was just an interactive credits screen. It was a level that you could traverse and jump around and it had all the credits, like art by me, music by, you know, me and Funtime Web, that kind of stuff. I now have to rework that <laughs> to not reference him, basically. Uh, which, you know... Yeah, it'll be a little tedious. It'll be kind of a painstaking process. All of this will be kind of a painstaking process. Uh, but you know, the sooner I, the sooner I do it, the sooner it's done. So uh, I'm gonna try to get that done as soon as I can, and then I'm gonna try to actually make some serious development on this game. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, you know, I, I really, uh, I think there's one Banana Rang trailer that's out at the moment, or at least one that's actually even remotely presentable. And, uh, it's from, it's from about a year ago now. It's about a year old trailer. Yeah, no, I'm pretty sure it's actually exactly a year old, uh, because it's from February 1st, uh, of last year, not this year. Um, when I put together that trailer, I believe there were seven levels done of the game. There are now ten levels done of the game out of an intended 27. So just not quite at the halfway mark yet. Um... But, uh, again, a big part of that has just been that I haven't really been working on it. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that I've been putting it off in favor of other projects, I've been procrastinating it, and the biggest thing is that, uh, I haven't been able to communicate well with Funtime Web, who was, um... Well, we had issues with communication, and that's really all I'm gonna say about it, but, um... Long story short, that is no longer an obstacle in the way of the development of the game. So, uh, hopefully that will speed up development a little bit. And I'm hoping... Again, I'm not going to make any promises because I don't want to disappoint you, but I'm hoping that I can get Banana Rang out by the end of this year. Uh, and if I do a really, really good job this year, then I can get both Banana Rang and Blood Knuckle 2 out by the end of this year, which would be great. Uh, I would really love that, but I can't make any promises because I'm honestly not very confident in myself that I'll actually be able to do that. Um, but I'm gonna try. Uh, I'm gonna try to get them both done by the end of this year. Um, I made uh, an itch.io devlog post about Blood Knuckle 2, and it's going to be very similar to the first game in structure, uh, almost the exact same in structure, actually. A little different. Some of the main differences are, for one, instead of just playing as Titanet, who was the main character in the first game, you're going to alternate between playing Titanet and Catraspio. In each level, it's going to switch. You'll play as Titanet in one level, then Catraspio in the next, then Titanet again, so on and so forth, until the end of the game. Uh... The bosses are going to be much more diverse than the first game because the first game's biggest weak point was that the majority of the bosses in the game were just a repeat of the same boss, except, you know, with increased HP and stuff like that. And it was just lazy uh, coding on my part, to be completely honest. I was just lazy. Uh, I honestly already had a problem with it before I released the game, but at that point I was already releasing the game. So I just, I got the game out. And it's something I'm going to improve on with the sequel. I already have a plan for what each of the levels are going to be. Uh, a lot of the music, almost all of the music, is actually already done for the game. Uh, now I just have to work on the art, the coding, and the voice acting. Yes, it is going to be voice acted. Uh, I had a great success on this site called Casting Call Club. Uh, you might have seen my, I believe it's my latest upload at this moment, actually. Uh which is a commercial for Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch, and I got this awesome voiceover, um, which I got for free, might I add, uh, just for making a casting call club post. So I'm gonna, and you would not believe how many entries I, I got for my post. So I'm, I've always planned to have Blood Knuckle 2 be voice acted, but up until this point, I've just planned to get voice actors the way I've always gotten voice actors, which is, you know, join voice acting Discord servers and make posts advertising my project. This is evidently a lot more effective, so I'm going to do that. Uh, I'm going to do this instead. Um, so you know, if for whatever reason you're interested in voice acting for Blood Knuckle Two, then uh, keep an eye out for a casting call club post by me. Uh, I'll probably post it 
further towards the end of the development of the game, or at least the middle, when I have a lot of the lines already written. Um, that being said, uh, one thing that I don't want to outright say, but I will mention because it is something I plan, uh, I, I can't be too specific because nothing is set in stone, nothing is guaranteed, I haven't exactly closed this deal yet, but um, I was able to get in some contact with a fairly large uh, streamer, a Twitch streamer, who I really look up to, uh, about the possibility of voicing the main antagonist, the sorcerer in the sequel, which would be really, really cool. I'm not going to say who it is. Uh, because I don't, you know, again, I don't want to disappoint you, I haven't exactly closed the deal yet, but, um, if it happens, it would be really, really cool, and it would make all my dreams come true, so, uh, <laughs> that would be really cool. Uh, anyways, uh, the, the last thing, really, that separates the sequel from the first game is that, um, it's going to be a little more graphic and a little more mature. It's still generally going to have the same kind of lighthearted, cartoony tone as the first one that all my games kind of have, but there is going to be, it's going to be significantly more violent and uh, a little more bloody and, you know, uh, and it, it's like, it's cartoonish, right? It's like cartoonish blood and gore. It's not, you know, it's not Deadpool or anything. <laughs> it's ju It's just, you know... It may be a little on the disturbing imagery side for, you know, little kids. I would not recommend... I mean, even the first game was rated teen. Uh, I would say that this one is going to be rated mature. Uh, just because it is going to be a lot more graphic and a lot more violent. Um, and the story will have a little bit of a darker tone. Uh, that being said, um, let's talk about... After that, um... <laughs> Now, uh, spoiler alert for Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch, if you have not played Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch, uh, then please stop watching here. If you don't have any interest in playing Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch, then, uh, please reconsider, because it's really fun, and I put a lot of work into it. Uh, if you've beat Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch, then you will know about the little part at the end credits, that says Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch will return in Battery Chad Builder 3. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about what that means. I'm going to let you speculate on that one. Uh, but the main thing that that actually outright confirms is that I am, in fact, making a Battery Chad Builder 3. There has been talks about a Battery Chad Builder 3 ever since way back in 2020 when Battery Chad Builder 2 released. But that kind of fell apart because I didn't really have a clear plan for what I wanted it to be. Well, I did, but I didn't have a clear execution of how I wanted to do it. Uh, and I'm honestly glad that it fell apart because uh, I have a new plan that is significantly cooler than my old plan. Uh, as evidenced by that little teaser that I put in the credits. So, um, I am, uh, I am working on Battery Chad Builder 3. Uh, and it's going to be the biggest game I've ever made. Uh, one thing that I do plan that I, I've always planned, uh, that hopefully I can actually do, is I want to put together a dev team that can code in 3D, because I can't. I've tried to learn. I have tried so many times to learn 3D game dev, and I just can't. It's just too intimidating for me. Um... But I want to put together a team that can actually code in 3D, and I want there to be the ability to make levels in 3D, because that is a concept that hasn't been explored before. And I have a clear idea of how to do it. I just need to get people who are talented enough to bring that vision to life. Um, that being said, uh, Battery Chad Builder 3 is way off in the distance. I want to make that clear. I do not have an estimated release date for this. Matter of fact, it's pretty much the planned end game of my content. Remember how I said I have a planned lineup of pretty much every game I ever plan to release? This game is at the very end of that lineup, and you'll see why when it releases. You know, again, the thing in the credits of Pellet Packer 2 kind of alluded to that, but I'm not going to say it. That being said, um, that's pretty much all I have to talk about. 
like I said, I've never really attempted to do something like this before. Uh, you know, my YouTube channel's kind of died off because, uh, I haven't, you know, I mean, it was dead before, even when I did make videos, but I lost interest in making videos because I make games now. I don't make videos. I'm not a video maker. I'm not good at it. <laughs> As evidenced by the fact that this has just been a long video of me rambling and talking, and most people probably clicked off within the first five minutes. Um, but... If, for whatever reason, you are interested enough in this to have watched it all the way to the end, then do me a favor and, like, leave a comment and say if you would like me to make any more of these or to just update you on the development cycle of any of these games, because I definitely will. Uh, I do enjoy talking about it, uh, even if I am just talking to a camera. And, uh, you know, I, I'll post devlogs pretty regularly on my itch.io pages, of course, but, uh, you know... Some things, like at the moment, Banana Rang does not even have a page on itch.io, and completely truthfully, I do not plan to make one until the game is just about ready to release. Pardon me, because I, uh, you know, I don't want to flood my, what is currently a pretty classy page with a good selection of things. I don't want to kind of flood that with, um, you know, stuff that's off in the distance, which is a similar reason as to why I have not yet uh, ported over a few of my older works. I've ported a select, a very select grab bag of my older works that I post on Game Jolt, but I left a few out. You'll notice that I left a few out. The ones that I left out are just ones that I think are of lower quality, are not quite as presentable as the things I did choose to include, because this whole itch.io thing is kind of meant as a fresh start for me, and I want to make a good impression, so I chose, you know, there are currently six pages on it, there's Battery Chad Shock the World, Battery Chad Builder, Battery Chad Builder 2, Pellet Packer Micro Munch, Blood Knuckle, and Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch, which released this February. Um, I, uh, you know, yeah, I, I really hope that you try some of those out. If you haven't, I'll link it in the description below. But um, I chose those because I think that those are some of the better games that I've released, and I think that they do a good job of, you know, presenting myself and being presentable uh, for somebody who isn't familiar with me, isn't familiar with my work, which is most people. I'm very small. Not a lot of people know me. A very select few people know me, and that was the crowd on Game Jolt when I was very popular there before I left, and uh, <laughs> uh, even then, pretty much none of them played my games. <laughs> Uh, they knew that they existed and they would reference them and joke about them, but pretty much nobody actually played them. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, it is what it is. Um, but, but that's why I don't plan on putting up pages for, you know, things that haven't released yet or things that I've released before, but that I don't consider to be of the highest quality because, you know, it's kind of a fresh start. I want to make myself presentable. I want this to, you know, kind of show people what I'm capable of as a game developer. And I think that I selected a very good selection of games that I've made, both in recent memory, you know, and then uh, Battery Chat Shock The World is the oldest game on there because that released in 2019. Uh, anyways, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say. This video is like 20 minutes. Um, I sincerely doubt anybody's gonna actually watch it, but if anyone does, and if you care to see more, let me know, because, uh, I, I, I do have a lot to say, and I would be interested in, you know, just posting progress updates. Hell, it would actually motivate me to get off my ass and start programming, because my biggest problem is procrastination. Once I start working, I'm extremely productive, but I have to get to the start working part, and that's hard for me. <laughs> Anyways, um, thank you for watching this. If you did watch it, and again, I, I can't stress this enough, please try out my games. They're all, they're all free. They all come with an album for the soundtrack with the download, completely for free. Again, you can put it on your phone or put it on your music player or whatever. It has album art and everything. It's very professional. Uh, you can play all of my games on your computer, uh, you don't need a special controller or anything like that, uh, hell, Pellet Packer Cookie Crunch in entire gimmick is that you play the whole thing with your mouse. So, uh, they're fun games, I put a lot of work into them, they're all free, and I would really appreciate if you were to try them out. Uh, I'm not making any money off of them, it's all non-profit, I just do this for fun. 
Uh, anyways, yeah, advertisement over. Goodbye. <laughs>